my 20th year as a strength conditioning coach, worked high school, college, worked professional athletes, worked private, worked remotely, got it all under my belt. We break it down in three lessons. The first lesson is what we do matters. This has to be the first, because if we don't believe in what we do, we shouldn't be doing it in the first place. And what I want you to take a moment, maybe you have this, hey, I'm at this critical juncture in my career where I don't know, know what I'm doing actually is making a difference. We'll go back to why you got into this in the first place. It probably did make a difference with you. And so often I talk to strength conditioning coaches that become disenfranchised with that simple matter of this was a significant aspect of your life so much so that you turned it into your career. And I've gone through this cycle over and over and over again of what's the point? What does it actually matter? It has to come back again to a sense that it's important to you. It has to be important to others. The central belief in what you do matters. And that should go into this conscious decision-making with everything you do, because we have an opportunity to make a difference that every single time that someone gives me a chance to improve their performance, that I have now a burden of responsibility to make the best decision possible. And when I put that weight on myself, and when I put the value on those decisions, it makes that what we do matter that much more. You'll always come across detractors. You'll always come across people who try to diminish the value of what you're doing, but it's undeniable when we are with good strength conditioning coaches, that that impact is massive and it has this whole other transcending thing past the time that you work with them, that the lessons and the impact that you will have on others will move well past whatever couple hours you get to start with them in a day, a week, and a month. And that comes back again to, You'll have your doubts, you'll have your moments, you'll have these things that you'll say, okay, if this is really important, why am I not getting more? Why do I not get more recognition? We'll go back to yourself, think about how this had an impact on you and remind yourself that what you do and what you choose to do makes a huge impact, not just in that short term, but long term. The second one is what others do does not matter. We are in the share and compare age of strength conditioning. This is our opportunity. This is our window. This is a chance to show all of the hard work, all the skill, all the talent, all the knowledge required to the world. And when that comes out, it comes met with detractors, naysayers, people who don't really have a great understanding of the nuance and the complexity, which you're going into work every single day with. So you have the detractors. You're going to have people that are going to be critical. And this is new territory for us as a profession. We've been always behind the scenes. And our product is represented through some sort of medium, right? A coach, player, something that's going to facilitate the effort that we put in towards something else. Now, in the, in the grand scheme of things, it's good. This is bringing us a lot of attention, a lot more opportunity, but it gets in this compare. Well, this person's doing that. And this person's doing this, this person says that this person says this, and what it becomes is this trivial exercise that doesn't really accomplish much, that the nuance and the complexity in which your environment created fostered this program that was organic and natural in a lot of ways. Sometimes we are victim of being maybe biased, maybe entrenched, maybe whatever it is it is. But when we get down to it, if someone's doing something differently, it has to be part of the equation that makes sense for them, not necessarily for us. But with that being said is When we are putting ourselves out there as a profession, we have to be willing to accept the criticisms and the opposition to the things that we're doing. But you also have a greater understanding that your situation is unique to you and you are the judge and jury of what is effective or not. Because at the end of the day, you're evaluating your program compared to speaking to the things that you're doing collectively within that session with those groups, with those athletes every single time which makes whatever is out there just noise and specific to their environment. But that's the trick here is being not unaware of what's going on and not disillusioned that what you do is end all be all, but this truth of they're going to do what they're do based off a set of criteria that makes sense for them and their environment. You have to do what makes sense for you based off of that. And then, and then you break it down. If they are choosing to do something different for 
whatever reason, maybe it is subjective and you choose to do it for a reason that feels going to give you a competitive advantage, it behooves you to not do what they're doing. Now, with that is if they are superior in terms of performing at a higher level and they are direct competition, you have to be able to adapt and adjust based off of objective, logical reasoning. And that becomes a rub here, that what they do doesn't matter until they are better than you. And yes, that might seem contradicting, but the truth is you have to work in your head and your space to provide the highest quality training. That might actually doing a deeper introspection in terms of the things that you're doing on a daily basis, performing at a higher level. The last lesson is your rep is your reputation. How you do something is significant and important. You've chosen what you do. You've been able to detach from the, what others are doing on an objective level. Now you have to go to work. And if your idea of training is better than your counterpart based off of objective evaluation of what's best, it really will come down to how you do it. That when we strip away whatever subjective preference or dogma or ideology we apply to training philosophy, we have to be judged by a single entity in the quality in which we train. That the execution based off of an a standard that we agreed upon beforehand needs to be met with each rep as quality as it possibly could. That becomes a fractal relationship with the greater good. That if I want to have a great outcome, I need to have great in inputs and each one of those inputs needs to be standardized and objectively evaluated. Throw away the nonsense that chaos is, is induced in your training. That's hiding. That's masking your program's efficacy with randomness and chaos. The outside world is chaotic. There is no doubt about it. But you, at the end of the day, need to be judged off of one single entity. Did you or did you not make your athletes better? And if you can't say that definitively by not having any quality control on your programming, you are not a coach. You are someone who's just occupying space and time. Hiding and masking your program around chaos and complexity isn't a sign of intelligence. It's a sign of actual weakness when you break it down. If I look at a coach objectively and I see just random ad hoc assignment of training variables, training exercises, and application of actual standards, you're not doing your job. There's a, a continuum to be overly rigid and restricted to letting athletes push threshold and getting up to technical proficiency and really challenging that technical standard. And then there's another level of just randomly assigning things and seeing what happens. There's a sweet spot in there. And we need to be able to push towards technical mastery at threshold. And what does that look like as a determinant of your coaching ability? That if athletes are running in an open, chaotic environment and they understand how to apply and load forces based off of objectively standardizing programming variables and exercise performance, you're going to have an, out, an outcome that you want. And you're going to be able to say over time that you are a key contributor to success. It ties back into what you do matters. That at the end of the day, if you're producing year over year, incredible level of results, that it goes into this notion of you are of value, that you are of purpose and you are a necessary component to that athlete performance. And that comes again to, can you standardize and can you objectively say what you did made a difference? That's important. 